Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the BC Calculus 518 Extra Practice Number 3 Solutions on Improper Integrals. For this problem, I'm trying to take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x. Now, the issue here is this infinite limit. To deal with this, I need to rewrite this using a limit as b approaches infinity of 1 to b integral. And then uh, we still have the 1 over x dx inside there. So antiderivative here, that's going to be ln absolute value of x, still evaluated from uh, 1 to b using a limit as b approaches infinity. So this is going to be ln of b, and I, I didn't bother writing the absolute value because you're going from 1 to positive infinity, so you're, you're guaranteed you're not going to have any negatives inside there. We have other issues, but not negatives. So we've got ln of b minus ln of 1, and this is going to end up being, as b approaches infinity, ln of b is also going to be infinity. Subtracting 0 doesn't really make a difference there. Since this comes out to infinity, this uh, limit diverges, this integral diverges, and has no value. For this problem, we want the integral from 1 to infinity of this expression. Since we have this infinite limit, this is an improper integral and has to be rewritten using a limit. So I'll write this as the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b. Uh, and I'm going to rewrite this as x to the negative 3 halves power, just to make it a little bit easier to take the antiderivative here. So using the reverse power rule, this bumps up to a negative 1 half power. Dividing by that, I'm really multiplying by negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2x to the negative 1 half. And I've still got the limit as b approaches infinity. Still got integral from 1 to b. So now plugging all this in, I can actually take a, a negative 2 out of that. And now inside, I've got the square root, the one actually 1 over the square root of b, minus 1 over the square root of 1. And as b goes to infinity, this 1 over radical b term goes to 0. So we really have negative 2 times negative 1, essentially. So that's going to uh, come out to positive 2. And that's it. For this problem, we're trying to integrate 1 over the cube root of x from 0 to 1. The issue here is that there's a discontinuity at the smaller limit of integration at 0. You're essentially doing 1 divided by 0. Because of that, we have an improper integral. And we're going to have to rewrite this using limits. So I'm going to write this as the limit, as we'll say, as a approaches 0 from the right side of integral from a to 1 of x to the, I'll write this as the negative 1 third power, just to make my next step a little bit easier. And now, let's see here, antiderivative, I'm going to bump this up to a 2 thirds power. So I'm multiplying by 3 halves. So we have 3 halves x to the 2 thirds power. Still have the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of uh, an integrating from a to 1. So taking out that 3 halves, inside, let's see here, this is going to be the cube root of 1 squared. And I'm going to be subtracting cube root of a squared. Now, as a approaches 0, we still have the 3 halves out there. Inside, this is just going to be 1. And as a approaches 0, this is just going to be 0 over here. So then we just end up with 3 halves. On this problem, the trouble with integrating this is that we have a discontinuity at x equals 0, the lower limit of integration. So that discontinuity makes this an improper integral. We have to rewrite this using a limit. I'll write this as the limit as a approaches 0 from the right side, so that we're approaching from inside the integral. So a approaches 0 from the right side, integral from a to 1. And then inside here, I'm going to just rewrite this using a negative exponent, just so I can do my reverse power rule on the very next step. So time to do the reverse power rule, taking the antiderivative. This is going to bump up to a power of negative 1 half, dividing by negative 1 half. I'm really multiplying by negative 2. So when the dust settles, I still have limit as a approaches 0 from the right. And evaluating that from a to 1, I'm going to have uh, negative 2x to the negative 1 half. So now I'm going to take out this negative 2. And inside here, I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus 1 over the square root of a. So as a approaches 0, well, we've, we've got some issues. Um, at this point, we're trying to divide by 0, which is not going to work out for us so well. 
this does not exist, the limit does not exist, therefore the integral is going to diverge and has no value. To find this integral, we have an issue with dividing by zero here. So because of that discontinuity at zero, this is classified as an improper integral, and we have to rewrite it using a limit. I'm going to take the limit as a approaches zero from the right side of integral from a to one of one over x dx. So I've basically just taken care of the problem by making this a number that I'm approaching rather than a number that I'm actually evaluating at. Um, but now I have to take the antiderivative. So that's going to be ln absolute value of x. And let's see here. Since I'm going from a little bit more than 0 to 1, I don't really need that absolute value. I can leave it on or off depending. Um, but I'm going to have ln of x, no absolute value needed this time around. Evaluating from almost 0 to 1. So this is going to be ln of 1 minus ln of a. And as a approaches 0, ln has a real problem with that. Um, ln goes to negative infinity as you get closer and closer to zero from the right side. And don't even ask me about approaching it from the left side. Um, so this does not exist. Therefore, the integral diverges and has no value. On this one, we're trying to take the integral from negative infinity to zero of this expression. So this infinity is going to give us some issues. This is actually an improper integral having one of these infinite limits of integration. So we're going to have to rewrite this with a limit. I'll write this as the limit as a approaches negative infinity, integral from a to 0 of all that stuff, which I'm going to rewrite as x minus 1 to the negative 2, just to make the next step a little bit easier. So taking my antiderivative now using the reverse power rule, this bumps up to an exponent of negative 1. Dividing by negative 1, I have negative x minus 1 to the uh, negative 1 power. Still going from a to 0, still have a approaching negative infinity. So plugging these numbers in, I've got this stuff with 0 plugged in. So this is negative 1 over 0 minus 1. And I've got this stuff with a plugged in. Since this is already negative, I'm going to be doing plus 1 over a minus 1. So this first term here, this is just going to come out to negative 1 over negative 1, which is just 1. For this next term, as a approaches infinity or negative infinity, this is a bottom heavy function, so this is going to 0. So 1 plus 0 is just 1. For this one, I'm trying to take the, in the integral from 0 to infinity of this stuff. So first problem is I have this infinite limit. This is an improper integral. Let me rewrite this as the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to b of 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. So now this is a little bit more mathematically kosher, um, but we still have to take the antiderivative. To do that, I'm going to eventually use the arctan antiderivative for this, um, but first I have to get this into a uh, x squared plus 1 kind of format. So to do that, let me start by taking out a 9 from that denominator. That'll be 1 ninth x squared plus 1 in whatever order I want to write it. And now I'm going to rewrite this 1 ninth x squared as 1 third x to the second power. So now I've basically got something squared plus 1 format down there. And let's see here. At this point, I can use my arctan antiderivative. So I'm going to have arctan of 1 third x, but I'm going to have to divide by the uh, inner derivative here. Dividing by 1 third really means multiplying by 3. And we already have a 9 in the denominator, so I have a 3 over 9, which comes out to 1 third arctan 1 third x. Now, all this time, notice, I've been carrying this limit as b approaches infinity along, and I'm evaluating all of this now from 0 to b. So I've got 1 third arctan 1 third b, and basically all that stuff with 0 in there as well. All right, so as b approaches infinity, um, arctan basically of infinity. I'm taking an infinite slope and being asked to give back an angle. So if you have an infinitely vertical slope, your angle is basically 90 degrees or pi over 2. And over here, if I'm giving you a, a slope of 0, you're giving me back the angle 0. So we've got pi over 2 minus 0 inside here. Still have a 1 third outside. So this is just going to be pi over 6. For this problem, I'm trying to take the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x dx. 
So on this one, I have to rewrite it. Since it's an improper integral, I have to rewrite this as the limit as b approaches infinity of integral from 0 to b of cosine of x dx to even have a chance of integrating this. And now antiderivative of cosine, well, that's pretty easy. That's just sine of x. So evaluating that from 0 to b, I've got sine of b minus sine of 0. Here's where we run into the issue, though. If you plug infinity into this, sine is not approaching a specific value. Remember, sine is just oscillating back and forth and can't really make up its mind. It bounces between negative 1 and 1, but it doesn't settle on a specific value. So because this oscillates, then the integral is going to diverge, and we don't have a value for this one.